since that's what I do, I love Narnia. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were my role models. I mean, so you give me Lord of the Rings, you give me Narnia, I'm not in heaven. Those, those are some great films. You give me something like Avatar, and uh, yeah, great. You know what I mean? It's like Dances with Wolves with Blue People. You know, that's all it is. It's, it's a remake of a Kevin Costner movie. It's nothing. And you put it in 3D. You know, great. You know what I mean? And then they have, and then there was specifically this whole environmental message, which I don't mind, you know, saving the environment. I just don't like political messages in my movies, unless it's a movie like The Manchurian Candidate with Frank Sinatra, where it's the message is meant to be there, it's in the script, but when you're writing a script and they say, well, can you put this political message in here somewhere? And they do that a lot in Hollywood, and I think that's what they did with Avatar. And living in California, we're very big on conservation. Um, talking to people here in Russia, they're, they're kind of surprised what we have in California. Um, they say to me, wow, we didn't realize that you have these things. I mean, we have wild black bears. We have mountain lions that weigh, you know, 250 pounds, who if they stand on both legs would be as tall as me, and you know, I'm 6'3", 6'4". Uh, you know, we have a lot of wildlife out. We have packs of wild wolves, coyotes, boars. So we're very big in conservation. We're very big on protecting the environment in California. And I think Hollywood puts a lot of that in movies, which I don't mind. You know, I'm big on the environment. Um, but I don't think it was needed in Avatar. You know? So that's what I didn't like about the movie. And, but you know, I, I, I see uh, some things in Avatar um, you know, that I can relate to as well. I was very surprised it beat Titanic for the biggest money maker when, when I heard um, they were making a movie about blue people from another planet and it's going to be in 3D and I just thought, oh, it's going to bomb. And then, and then usually when they tell you, oh, it, it, it cost over $700 million to make, well, it's never going to make its money back. It's, you know, Hollywood thinks of it this way. If you make a movie and it costs $300 million to make, if the movie makes only two hundred fifty movie, uh, two hundred fifty million dollars, it's a bomb. It has to exceed uh, how much it, it, it took to make the movie. You know, so what happens to a movie that uh, it plays in the states? Say it costs three hundred million to make, and say it makes two hundred fifty million. Hmm. Well, it's a bomb in the states. Oh. Send it to Europe. Let's see if you can get over the 300 million mark. <laughs> you know, and there are some movies that uh, actually do better in, in Europe than the States. It, it just depends on the audience and the merchandising. Absolutely. There was a, a, a movie that uh, was out last year, G.I. Joe. Um, be, me being raised on G.I. Joe, uh, which are army men. You know, they fight, and, you know, they're like Barbie dolls for boys, right? <laughs> you know, and um, in the 80s, it was like, uh, you know, you had the merchandising, you had the cartoons, you had everything, and it was G.I. Joe, uh, the real American hero, was the slogan. So it was very patriotic, you know, and, you know blah, blah, blah. So they go, oh, we're going to make G.I. Joe, but we're not going to say real American hero. We're not going to mention America or anything. And then you ask them, well, what's the reasoning for that? Well, if we make it too patriotic, the Europeans aren't going to see it. We want to make money. So, so it's all about making money uh, to them. So, you know, it depends on, on how they want to focus it. Um, Superman, uh, if any of you have seen that movie, I think it was four or five years ago, um, there was a big controversy in the United States um, about that movie. Because in Superman, it has always been for, for uh, the Superman slogan was Superman, truth, justice, and the American way, right? Yeah. That was the slogan. <laughs> and in the movie, um, one of the characters uh, said uh, in one of his lines, well, you know, Superman, you know, he's for truth, justice, and all that other stuff, <laughs> you know? And they asked him, well, why did you take out the American way, which is traditional? And why did you put all that other stuff? Well, if we send it to Europe, the Europeans aren't going to like it. So, you know, base, um, and Hollywood is very sensitive to, you know, 
the needs and thoughts of Europeans, of course, because they want to make money in Europe. But, you know, then you have a bunch of Americans saying, well, I was raised on Superman all my life, and it's always been that way. Why change it for, you know, to make money over in Europe? You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it just, Hollywood doesn't care about morality. They don't care about virtue. They only care about one thing, that's money, you know? So what I was yeah, American dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, American dollars. Absolutely. Yeah, but what I'm interested what I'm interested in is I would like to know from everyone here. Um, well, first of all, your names because I don't know any of your names. But yeah, if, uh, what we do in the states is if we have like a round table, you know, um, we'll say our name a little bit about ourselves. I don't. I'm not saying you know say anything about yourself. But what I'm really curious about is I would like to know what your favorite movie is. So if I can you say your name and say what your favorite movie is and why. For me, uh, being a writer and, and loving movies, I'd really like to know. And since this is more of a discussion group, I would like to, to know. So I guess we can start with you and work our way around. Is that okay? My name is Elena. And my favorite, I have two favorite movies. Uh -huh. The first one is All About Eve. Uh -huh. And the second one is The Verdict. Mm -hmm. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Mm -hmm. All the movies. Yeah. Well, The Verdict was uh, in the 80s, right? No. Was it? Before the Ruben, Cindy Ruben. Maybe 80s, maybe uh -huh. beginning of the 80s. Cindy Ruben. Yeah. I, I saw The Verdict in the theaters mm -hmm. as a kid. <laughs> and my dad, he, he, he would always take me to rated R movies. He, he didn't care. My dad just didn't care. He would take me to see Road Warrior at age six years old. You know what I mean? He just didn't care. And, um, and he took me to see The Verdict. And as a kid, I walked out of that theater thinking, why did my dad take me to see a movie about an, uh, a drunk attorney that was washed up? <laughs> you know, but it was a very fantastic movie. So, it is a very good movie. Paul Newman, great actor. So. And the story is good. The story is very good. It's very yeah. sensitive message about mm -hmm. how to care, how to, how to behave to your profession, and how to be trustful, not to, not to try to hide your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I like this uh, movie um, all about you because the dialogue is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people today, they look at a movie and they're just paying attention to the action scenes and, and the fast pace, but really a movie is all about the writing and, and the dialogue. Um, Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino. People will watch that movie and go, oh my gosh, it's such a violent movie. Look at it. The subject matter is just out of control. But if you just watch it and really listen to what the actors are saying, the script is, is fantastic. It's one of the best scripts I think ever written. It's, it's just the dialogue. Pulp Fiction. John Travolta, Bruce Willis, um, Samuel Jackson. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. And uh, it's really well written, and it's pulp fiction. P-U-L-P. P-U-L-P and then fiction. Yeah, there's a scene in there where John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson, uh, they're in the car together, <laughs> and uh, John Travolta's character just comes back from Amsterdam. And Americans, we're all into the fast food, and I notice so are you now, since we brought McDonald's and Subway here. <laughs> and... Um, and they're talking about how people in Amsterdam put mayonnaise on their french fries. And they're like, oh, that's disgusting. Ketchup. I mean, just simple discussions between two characters. And to sit there and watch these two characters talk about the difference between mayonnaise and ketchup and be fascinated about it, that you know is a good script. And it's written very well. And that is also a California conversation because most Californians will sit there for a long time talking about why ketchup is better than mayonnaise. 
So, okay. But I would like to mention Scarface, which is probably my most favorite movie ever. And I think this, like, Al Pacino's greatest role, way better than Godfather. I like Godfather too. But I think Scarface is just really, really making me think of the great message behind it. It's like Pulp Fiction, which we're talking about. People see it a lot, like just a violent criminal movie showing this like, daily life of criminals. I think the message is way deeper than I really like Scarface. Also, I like Bundle Saints. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I like to this movie called Street Kings. Mm -hmm. And it was released maybe two years ago. Nobody liked it. And everyone I know who didn't like it, they said it's a stupid movie. Was it the only one who liked it? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's really great. And I really see the message there. Have you seen it? Uh, Street Kings, is that the one with. Um, <coughs> Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, no, I haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't know, nobody likes this. It's like one of these uh, movies from uh, police and a film of a very long called Street Kings and uh, uh, Scarface. Scarface, yeah, no, um, yeah, no, Scarface is a good movie. Have you seen Carlito's Way? Yeah, sure. Ah, that's a good movie yeah. as well. There's a scene, there's a scene in Carlito's Way, um, you know, and even though the actors are bad, I, I believe everyone has a little bad in them. I mean, we're all born from original sin, right? So we all have a little badness in all of us, a little, but predominantly we're all pretty good people, right? But there's this one scene where Carlito, he doesn't dance. And he, he, he marries this girl who's played by um, Michelle Pfeiffer. And, uh, and he, he says, or she says, oh, come on and dance with me, do some mambo, we're at the club, let's do some dancing. I don't dance. You can go dance with someone else, right? So, me, I don't dance either, okay? I don't like to dance. And if I'm with someone, oh yeah, go dance with someone else. That's fine, I'll sit and watch, I'll drink, you know, whatever. Because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, over, you know, how guys can get some time. I'm not like that. So yeah, go dance. So, I'm relating to this character in Carlito's way. And so, she goes ahead and dances on the dance floor, and he's just sitting there. And she's dancing with this other guy. And this other guy is just all into her, you know, grabbing her, just doing all these, you know, really sensual dance moves with his wife. And he's sitting there and just getting angrier and angrier and angrier and to the point where he just beats the guy up. And, and, she, and his wife's like, you said it was okay to dance. Yeah, but not like that, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that, that's, yeah, that was a great script, absolutely. So, okay, next. My name is Olga, and um, my favorite movies are my French ones. Ah. So, um, I don't know if somebody's interested. Uh, name them, so yeah, please. go ahead. Uh, my favorite, like, most favorite at the moment is uh, Je Don't Call. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment it fits my life very well, applies to my life. Also. Uh, uh, so, that's it. Interesting. What's it about, if you don't mind? Um, this is about um, two people who uh, was uh, brought up together and um, they have a kind of game. They love with each other but uh, too scared to admit it. And mm -hmm. uh, they have a kind of game uh, that allow him. Uh, allow uh, them to, to express themselves and um, but in the end they just um, they end up um, uh, separated so um, it's kind of interesting in psychological way did a Russian write that story it sounds like Russian writing <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's a typical French movie actually mm -hmm. like um, it's mostly chick flick also ah, chick -flick, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I have found um, many, and uh, it was surprising, but I found, I found many guys uh, who really into this movie, so probably it's found more than one. Maybe. Well, I'm not too much into chick flicks, but someone recommended a movie called The Holiday, because they thought you can relate to it a little bit. It's um, with Jack Black, uh, Jude Law, Cameron Diaz, and hmm, what's the girl's name from Titanic? I forget her name. 
Yeah, and yeah, Kate Winslet, right? And the uh, girls from England, one's from LA, and they switch, and uh, they both fall in love. I thought that was a great story, you know. So yeah, it's the first chick flick I've seen in years, but I really like it. So, um, but Russian writing, for example, is um, I don't. I'm not a big Gogol fan at all. I'm more Pushkin, but um, like I said at the lecture, Americans are very much into writing happy endings, and Russians uh, don't write a lot of happy endings. Um, I like well. Some of my favorite movies have sad endings. The Mission, with um, Jeremy Irons, a very sad movie. I love that movie. Elephant Man is a great movie as well. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. The, the Mission. The mission with Jeremy the Irons, mission. Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robert De Niro. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, yeah, he is. And with Liam Neeson, is a, so it's a great cast. It's called The Mission. It's very good. Excuse me, sir. I don't know what is a chick flick. Oh, uh, a chick flick is like a dating movie. Oh, I see. Uh, no, no. Yeah, predominantly targeted towards women. Usually single women. Like so yeah, and usually the stories are about a girl who's trying to look for love in New York City. And she meets this guy, you know, and and she just falls on. And I, you know, I'm a guy, so I don't understand it because I can never understand why a girl would ever fall for a guy. I mean, I look at guys, and it's no offense, guys, but I think, including myself, we're just we're just rubbish. I don't know why girls date us, really. I really don't. You know, and, I, and you know, a lot of times, I gotta tell this story. I just have to tell this story. Um, yesterday was like, um, it's like a, a nightmare day for me. <laughs> I went to Red Square and I visited Lennon, you know, my old buddy, <laughs> and uh, walked through. And go, oh, that's interesting, a dead body. I haven't. It's not like I haven't seen one of those before, you know. So I walked through there, and then I went to see Shutter Island, which is a bit of a horror movie. So, you know, a dead body horror movie. And then what scared me the most is after the theater, I just was in the metro, and I saw this very young, beautiful, attractive Russian girl, and she was with the most rubbish guy on the planet. I said to myself, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And it was like a total nightmare. So I don't understand why women go out with guys. I really don't. But maybe because I'm a guy and I don't look at a guy and say, he's pretty attractive. You know, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't, I don't do that. So when I look at guys, I just say, yeah, they're just guys. You know, I, just, you know, I, I think, I think, uh, I think there's only, like, I, I've said this before, I think there's only five attractive guys on the planet that I've looked at and said, yeah, they're pretty attractive and they've all played James Bond. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. So, that's the reason for that. So, I'm, so sorry. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so am I. I'm out too. I mean, I look in the mirror every day and say, what am I doing to myself? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so that's a, yeah, that's a chick for you. <laughs> My name is Monica. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I've been I think he's very much talented. And the film, I, I don't know 
or the name in English it is her cake means sweet. Mm -hmm. I know her films in names in German mm -hmm. because I make it you know very much very good film and the Vietnamese kids did play a tragical role and that was very much important. How he's gonna play not only this but he plays in Mars. Well, you know, Bruce, uh, Bruce Almighty. Yeah. Bruce yeah. Almighty. Yeah. 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 Now, um, comedians, they can play sometimes um, best dramatic lives because their real lives are so tragic. Um, Robin Williams, for example, yeah. mega comedian, mega comedian. He started on a small TV show. Happy Days playing an alien called Mork and then he ended up getting a, a spin-off show called uh, Mork and Mindy where he played this alien, this comedy and then he, he delved into movies, started uh, you know, playing comedy you know, movies and then um, got into serious roles. A movie with him and Robert De Niro called Awakening. Uh, amazing movie, tragic movie. Um, so look, I like, I like sad movies too. Elephant Man with John Hurt. I recommend that to everybody. That movie will change your life. I watched that movie and I, I, I have no fear of saying this. I cried for 45 minutes straight after that movie. I mean, bawling my eyes out, that movie. It just, it is the saddest movie I've ever seen. Amazing. Also, I love to watch the movie because not the other one needs it. That was even a song. And the last one came also, which I could not fall away from me. I saw it was a, it is a, a one a film program, intellectual TV. Mm -hmm. It started, I think, at 10 o'clock, only our Russian actors say about the Indian, about this Sweden, about what is it, our directors also, also. And about 12 o'clock in the night, the film started. Because it is not typical film, it's not happy end, it is later we to think about sometimes a location of States, only women want to see that movie. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> and if a man saw that movie, he never admitted it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not for me. Not for me, no. <laughs> okay. My name is Gaia, and um, I, um, I, I prefer um, a European um, film, and especially Italian. Mm. It, it's, I can say that it's my favorite. Film as um, uh, uh, um, as um, especially in the in the sense of uh, aesthetic, in, in Italian aesthetic, and um, uh, uh, several years year ago it was shown by our um, TV. Um, uh, TV uh, series of Italian film, uh, it was called um, <coughs> uh, The Day Longer Than the Night. Mm -hmm. The Day Longer Than the Night. And uh, um, uh, it was film about uh, our generation. Uh, it's beginning the 50 and uh, was, um, and was uh, uh, 200 about, mm -hmm. and uh, the history of family. And it was shown how um, no, it's, uh, it was a drama. Simply family, but um, uh, in, in, uh, intelligent. But uh, there are some tragic events. But it was shown how that uh, um, um, <coughs> what uh, for me it was interesting how the uh, idea was uh, changing with the with this period of uh, yeah, how it was. Uh, so they. The, the, uh, you, you can say the condition of, of, of life or, and of our mind, of our stereotype, sure. mm -hmm. is changing during this period. Mm -hmm. and so 
the children is uh, absolutely different. Absolutely. Who is uh, now trend is uh, some absolutely different idea of life than uh, the people who are 40, 50. Absolutely. Well, so, especially this day and age. I mean, the, look at the, what has happened. Yeah. I mean, today, compared to even 30 years ago, is completely different because of technology. Uh, in the States, you know, when I was a kid, you'd go out, go to school, you'd play basketball, football, whatever, you know, five hours after school, you were constantly out there playing. Now, what do they do? You know, they're on a computer, constantly. And uh, American kids, I think, today are... Maybe Russian kids, I don't know too much about Russian kids, but American kids, they're leaning more into that Japanese culture of you get home and you just, you don't go out and you don't do a lot of playing, not a lot of activities, you know? Which is unfortunate because it's good to get some fresh air, especially out in California where it's not snowing. So, <laughs> yeah. so, um, but I'll tell you, a good Italian film, which is, uh, fantastic film and it shot uh, amazingly is a movie called The Flowers of St. Francis, which is an amazing uh, movie, uh, Italian movie. So, um, uh, before to answer this question, I want to ask you, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, according to this paper, we have a second meeting with you, and I ask you to go to bookshop and to know everything about American literature. The best right American writer in